What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Team Chat Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Jarrett Wilson, joined through the power of the internet this time, because we're having to do this remote, Rachel Mogan. Hello. Buongiorno. Buongiorno to you as well. How are you this fine Sunday morning? Well, yeah, I, it does feel nice that we're still recording on a Sunday morning. We yeah, it does. Always it, it keep it do up with our morning stream, not morning streams, morning recordings. But yeah, this this still feels right. It does. It does. It feels really good. I, I'm enjoying this. This is this is fun to get to do it too. Plus, this is also, I think. Like we always used to, I mean, sometimes we've recorded remote before, but it was usually like when Zach was still here. So it would be like, he would still be here with me and then, or like and you were gone or like he was gone and you were here with me. But it's, it's interesting that this is, I think our first full episode that's been done completely remote. Yeah, I guess you're right. I, I guess we've only really ever done like a handful of bonus odes. Yeah. Remote? Yeah. A couple things yeah. like that. Yeah. Oh, like our react videos every once in a yeah, while to like yeah. the, the, uh, Life is Strange 2 trailer and different things like that. But uh, but yeah, welcome everybody to this first full remote episode of Team Chat Podcast, a video game show where we talk about video games, the ones we love, the ones we hate, and everything in between. New episodes come out Tuesdays, 9 a.m. Central Time, and you can listen to those on podcast services around the World Wide Web, such as Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and others. You can also watch each episode on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Podcast. And you can find us on social media, such as Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can join our Discord server, where you can talk about us with games throughout the week when we're not here recording a great episode for you. And finally, if you're loving and enjoying everything that we're creating for you each and every week and are like, hey, I'd really like to help make Team Chat Podcast bigger and better, well, you can by going to patreon.com slash Podcast, where it's for as little as a dollar a month. You can support the show, and in return, we'll give you cool perks like getting the episodes early, access to a private channel on our Discord server, and Team Chit Chat, which is a sh- patron-exclusive show for the first two weeks of those episodes. I do, though, want to put out a quick note because, oh, look at that kitty cat. She just wants to say hi real quick. Oh my Good goodness. Kitty. What a sweet kitten. Uh, she fell in the toilet today. Anyways, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> That's a good way to start a morning. <laughs> Clean off toilet water off your cat, then talk about video games. It's, it's what, what can you ask for? Um, but I did want to make a quick note about Team Chit Chat. I am very apologetic that we have been behind on those episodes. That has been due to a lot of different things, but I'm working to get us caught back up on those. I have a new episode coming out soon that I'll be releasing this week. If it's not out already by the time you are listening to this episode. So I will, I apologize everyone for being a little behind on those. We will get caught up on those post haste. But uh, if you don't want to do that through our Patreon, that's totally fine. We completely understand. You can still support the show by uh, a myriad of other ways, such as writing us reviews, subscribing on your YouTube channels and on the podcast service of your choice, writing us reviews there. And of course, telling your friends, all those things help us make the show bigger and better. And we are appreciative and love each and every one of you who listen, watch and support the show. Thank you all. Thank all right. You. Well, uh, so yeah, before, well, let's go ahead and do our moment with Mogan. I was going to say, maybe we should check in a little bit first, but let's keep uh, on how, what we've been doing, what we've been playing, stuff like that. But first let's, let's get a little bit of news. Let's keep it with the normal flow. Let's find out what's coming out soon in our moment with Mogan. Right on. So because we streamed last week's um, episode, uh, I do want to circle back real quick to a couple of, um, well, really just one game that came out that I'm really like personally invested in. Persona 5 Royal did come out for PlayStation 4 on March 31st. So that is the expanded revised version of Persona 5. So it is very different than the original version. It's got an entirely new character that you can have in your party. Mm -hmm. It has a lot of quality of life uh, updates that they made. Um, For example, Morgana, the cat, will no longer force you to go to bed at a certain time once it gets to a certain point in the day, meaning you have a lot more of an ability to explore, do what you want, and build relationships with people in the real world before you go into, uh, you know, what is essentially the dungeons of the game. That's so cool. it's supposedly a fantastic experience, enough so that I've been really thinking about buying it because I loved Persona 5 when I played it, but there were definitely some things that were really annoying, and I would love it if those were no longer an issue. So Persona 5 Royal PlayStation 4 just came out on March 31st. I actually wondered had, what that one was because I didn't. I was like, why is there suddenly this new version of Persona 5? I didn't know if it was like the Game of the Year edition or something like that. But like, no, so it's, it's just not. an expanded it's, version of the game. It's just a, it's just a better version of the game, hmm, which I cool. do wonder. I do wonder like what led to that decision yeah. because Persona 5 was already 
good game. Mm-hmm. You know, even though there were little things that people complained about, it's not like it was a bomb. It was a huge success. Right. So it's like, huh, are they just trying to capitalize on a good thing? Or were they like, man, these comments, we know that it sucks having to go to bed. We're just going to make you a new game. <laughs> just because that one thing, that's, they're like, no, we're going to, we're going to redo this. I bet it was just like to, to keep a good thing going. I bet, I bet like give, give the players a little bit more content, different stuff like that. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, And then you also had The Complex, which came out for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC on March 31st. And that brings us up to April. So on April Fool's Day, always a bad sign, a totally reliable delivery service came out, which first of all, love the title. That's cool. Uh, That's for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. On April 3rd, a bunch of games came out. So this was just this past Sunday, uh, Friday. So A-List Tournament, that is spelled A-E-O-L-I-S. It's virtually all vowels. So A-List, Ioli, Eilish, who knows? A-List Tournament came out for and uh, along with Hyper Parasite for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. In Other Waters for Switch, PC, and Mac. Ha mm. uh, Resident Evil 3 Remake came out for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. Uh, we actually had some comments about that one that I kind of wanted to share if I can find them. Oh, that's right. So- Brandon started playing it, didn't he? Yeah, it's pretty short, but Brandon is one of the most hardcore Resident Evil fans, and he loved the previous remakes. So this is kind of his short short uh, recap of that. He says, Resident Evil 3 Remake is a 6 out of 10. I would not recommend it full price. Oh. Apparently the game is better on Nightmare Mode, but I don't feel inclined to find out right now. So we don't have um, you know a ton of explanation for that, but I do know from our many years of Brandon's very helpful input, that I believe him. So, yeah. Well, actually, I was going to say it was pretty interesting uh, that he put it at a six. I'm pretty sure that's what like IGN gave it too. Hmm. Well, IGN so, six I mean, is like, basically a zero. <laughs> so I just, a little bit. Well, more. no, I'm just I'm just saying like I was like oh oh wow that's funny they they give like the exact same number that's pretty cool he's, he's like yeah. the great the great minds you know they all. <laughs> Um, uh, so below comes out today, April seventh, uh, for PlayStation Four only. We also have Disaster Report Four: Summer Memories. Oh, <laughs> two very conflicting subtitles within a game. And we're going to uh, be that's... living that basically. Yeah, we are. God, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> too uh, soon, that... game. Too soon. Too soon. Uh, that's for PlayStation VR, PlayStation Four, Switch, and PC. And then coming very soon. Very soon. God, how am I going to find the time? Final Fantasy VII Remake comes out for PlayStation 4 this week on April 10th. Very nice. Very nice. Um, I don't know how you'll find the time. I personally right now have all the time to play to play all these things because a little bit of news here. Last of Us Part Two has now been delayed indefinitely. Oh, yeah. That came out Thursday, that. last Thursday. Yeah. Thir- no, it, it was Friday, I think, maybe. But uh, because of all the COVID-19 business and all that and keeping it, you know, they just... they. I think from what I saw, like Jason Schreier t- from Kotaku, he was tweeting out that, like, they almost had the game actually done. It's just r- continuing to fix, uh, do bug fixes and everything. But it's more in the delivery and the publishing and getting it out there to everyone. That's what's causing the delay. A lot of people are like, well, just drop it digitally. Well, internet speeds are over maxed right now anyway. Think of what a massive game like that going only digital would do. And then there's a lot of things, too, where it's like not everyone can download it. So why would you only limit it to the people who can? Yeah. I, so it makes sense. That. It absolutely makes sense that they would delay it. It does just hurt that it's an indefinite delay. We have no idea. I actually kind of think that it being an indefinite delay is at least a good thing Mm -hmm. because I feel like it would be so much worse for them to have to delay again, but not have a defined, but have a defined date and then have to delay again. Mm -hmm. And it's like, Mm -hmm. if you just make it indefinite, you leave yourself doors to just do it when it feels right. And when you, no, you can't. Exactly. So I personally, I think that's a, a good choice. Just oh, yeah. Because I we agree. have no idea uh, yeah. when they really will be able to release it. I agree for for exactly the same reasons. Like, it makes sense. It makes perfect sense for, to say, we don't know when. Sit tight. Um, but still, though, when do you think 
you know, granted, uh, granted, we don't know how long all this is going to go, but say like, cause my kind of thinking is if this doesn't all clear up and they can give us a better idea and say like, they can't release it in the May, June window, I would see it possibly getting pushed. And I'm saying this in the discord, I think it in our discord, like, I think it won't, won't come out until either holiday or like with the PS five. I agree. Um, I think holiday is pretty, um, if they did push it to be a PS five bridge game, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, plenty of games have gotten that treatment from all kinds of consoles and publishers. Mm -hmm. So that wouldn't surprise me at all, but I, I'm betting on holiday. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm thinking too. But, uh, so with that, you know, I've got like all this time now to go back and and play through like these new games and go through and like redo backlog. Oh, I mean, I have time in theory, but like, I haven't had a ton of time to play games this week. All I need Um, you to do, Jared is your Xbox. One, put it on the curb for me and I will come get it so that I can play Ori for Man. God's sake. So I actually was playing Ori yesterday and I uh I got to this it's it's an earlier, it's like one of the first big puzzles, like right before what would you say the first boss, like the first clear of like area clearing of the game. And it you know, for people who play the game, it's in the area called the Wellspring. I won't go much into detail on this, but there's this incredible Spoilers, Jared. God, incredible, I haven't gotten to play it yet. No, I'm just letting you know. It's just like there's this incredible part there where it's a like the level design and the mechanics of the platforming are just top notch. And it was so oh, good. So I, I was like me. again, I was just like, Mogan loves Hollow Knight. She's gonna love this game. It's great. Um but no, so because of that, I'm like well, now I don't feel the pressure to speed as fast through like Doom Eternal and Will the Wisps and to so I can get to my Last of Us playthrough before The Last of Us Part 2 was going to come out. I've actually been kind of like, well, like last night, I've been kind of just like jumping around randomly, trying new things out or going back to old games and just, I'm, I'm not being resourceful with my time at all, but for, <laughs> for playing these games. <laughs> Case in point, last night I restarted Dragon Age Inquisition. Wow, that's a long way <laughs> I, back, buddy. I went back. I know. I just was like, I was actually sitting there playing Control. Uh, and I was like, you know what? This is super fun. Not no, necessarily feeling it tonight. I feel like I need, I'm wanting an RPG. But what RPG? I asked myself. And then I was like, wait, hold the phone. Dragon Age. I still have that. I went back. You know when my last save in Dragon Age was? When? In Dragon Age Inquisition? 2016. Oh, wow. So I was like, I don't Four remember what's going years on. Ago. Yeah. I was like, I don't know what's going on. I'm just going to restart. So restarted the whole thing. And I was like, this is what my, this is what I needed. This is what I was looking for. Um, but yeah, so that was a bit of a good time, but getting to our, our actual topics of the day. So like everyone may have noticed, we did not put an, out an episode last week uh, because we were trying to figure out all the different things of, you know, doing it remotely slash we both weren't. <laughs> It'd been hard weeks. We just weren't necessarily, we wanted the week to kind of recover and stuff like that. Play a little bit more of Doom Eternal and Animal Crossing New Horizons so that this week we can bring you all the, our first impressions of both of those games. So wait, what did we just say? Am I starting off with Doom or are you, you were starting okay, I'm starting Doom. off with Doom. All right. So Doom <laughs> Eternal, uh, we're going to give our first impressions of both of these games. Cause by now we've put in some pretty serious time in them. Like, um, we've played through a whole bunch. I know how many, like how many days do you think of animal crossing you've played through? Uh, I, I guess it's true. It's true file. time. So, I mean, it's true time and I haven't time traveled uh, for days. I did do two hours, just two hours of time traveling not tea, not tea. for the sake of the stream. But I think it's been approximately two weeks cause it came out on the 22nd, right? E- 23rd, 23rd, 23rd. Yeah. So it's been about two weeks. Cool. So yeah, I've been playing through Doom Eternal and everything like that. And if everybody who joined us on our streams where we eat last Wednesday, where we both played through, we both played like an hour of each of those games to just kind of show where we were, show off the games and everything and talk through them. So we kind of like had a little preview of a, an, of a first impression there. But uh, I will say Doom Eternal is being, it's, it is giving me all the feelings of Doom 2016, which I really loved. And, you know, and really pushing all those same buttons and, and all that stuff for me. It is, but it is so, I feel like so much harder 
just in how the mechanics work and how new things that they added in. I don't want to go too too big into like story and spoilers and all that stuff. I will say that I that the big thing about it though is that I'm really enjoying the lore of the game and how much more that it's putting into this background of the Doom Slayer himself. Why hell is attacking Earth? The whole like this centuries old conflict that is now presenting like the the demons and everything as this other race of being and then there's this the sentinels which are like the doom slayer is a descendant of or something like that like their civil past civilization and how they kind of guarded the earth and the galaxy from the demons and all this and so it, it but then also it goes into this you see it in the very first mission you know, of the hell priests and the, who are like these rulers of the various realms of hell. And then also there's the con maker who's like the overall ruler of it all. And it's like you get this sense and from where I'm in the game and everything, you just get this sense that there's this like centuries or millennia old agreement between how who which force basically gets to control earth. And so it's just kind of an interesting seeing this. There's more to it than just demons are invading and we have to defend and the doom guy has to save us all. It's almost like this, this politics in play and the doom guys just in the middle of it being like, screw everybody. I don't care. I'm doing my, what I have to do to save earth kind of thing. So I like that, that it really puts these really big high stakes into it. Other than just demons are here. You got to kill them. And so I really enjoy that. But like I said, the mechanics of the game itself and the actual combat so much harder, I think, than what Doom 2016 brought to the table in that Doom 2016, there were hard areas. There were very difficult parts that required a lot of quick movement, quick switching in between weapons and different things, using the environment to get the best of your enemies. This one. I feel like it adds in so much more in how you collect your ammo, how you collect health, how you collect armor and how you build up your different abilities that you really have to be even more mindful about what you're doing when you engage in a fight. You can't just run in with a super shotgun while it is an impressive and gloriously bloody, disgusting weapon. I was about to it's say, so isn't great. that exactly what I saw you do? I feel like you did that, though. I mean, it's still my main weapon. Yes, <laughs> you can use that in all that stuff, but it's you have to switch it up. Or I do, at least. Maybe there are, there are other Doom players out there who can just do it and just be like, I, I don't care. The super shotgun, shotgun is super Shotgun only, fun. no planning. Exactly. <laughs> oh, I'm sure there's videos of people doing runs of it that way because, you know, that's just why why people love a, a fun, unique challenge in a way to beat a game, and that's, that's definitely one of them. Uh, but I just love how, because, for example, Doom 2016 – you do a glory kill, which is where you stagger the enemies. They flash orange and blue. You can go up and do a special like melee execution of them. And when you would do that, that would give you health. This one, it still gives you health. But now if you use like this one weapon called the flame belt, it's just basically a flamethrower, you set enemies on fire and they'll drop shields. So then when you kill them, they like explode with a whole bunch of extra shields for you to pick up. But if you do it with a glory kill, then you can get shields and health all at the same time. There's also... They also, I feel like, limited the amount, the base amount of ammo that you can carry per weapon. Like, I want to say the shotgun even is like 18 shots. Like, it's not very many when you first start out. So you're constantly having to be on the look for ammo. Well, how do you do that? Well, you cut a demon in half with your chainsaw, and that gives you all the ammo in the world and replenishes all your ammo, which I right, always think is really... It just pops out of them. Yeah, it just <laughs> pops out of them. They just all carry the gift inside, you know? Um, but what if that's what's in us, Jared? <laughs> what if when what if when we die, our decomposed we behind shotgun ammo? <laughs> <laughs> <That'd> be... <laughs> but it, so it's like you have to be thinking of all these different things. Uh, then it, and because you just can't, there are pickups around on the ground and everything like that for you to be able to go grab extra ammo, extra health, extra shields when you need it and stuff like that. But that's still. The majority of the time, you're in combat surrounded by anywhere from five to 50 demons, and you can't necessarily be like trying to make it from one side of the map to the other side of this room where you can pick up an extra health and ammo. So you have to be constantly thinking, constantly keeping an eye on the recharge rates of all your abilities so that you can unleash the maximum amount of death and destruction that you can. So that's been very, very difficult and rewarding at the same time to figure out the balance of just pure hard aggression and knowing when you have to fall back, find the, you know, know how many charges of chainsaw fuel you have. So you don't be like, Oh, I'm out of all my ammo quick 
cut the nearest demon and you're like, oh, no, nothing in the tank, nothing there. And so you got to constantly be just staying on top and mentally checking. Okay, where? Okay, cool. My frag grenade has recharged. My flame, my flame belch is ready to go. Great, because I'm low on shields. So it's been learning all those mechanics in the combat has been very, very, very rewarding. But it also means it's been very hard. And even the beginning levels of this game have been very difficult. Like I was I, saying on the... Or, or yeah, I had heard that the difficulty spike from Doom 2016 to Doom Eternal was pretty extreme. Do you find that that's generally true? I would say so. I Because I play it, and I played Doom 2016 too on Ultra Nightmare, not or Ultra Violence, not the hardest, which is like Nightmare in Hell. I can't remember. But... Um, what the hardest level is, but I'm the one below that playing ultra violence. And even in doom 2016, the first couple, the first level in doom 2016, I know I played through and I know I had difficulty with, and I was like, Oh, okay. I died. I died. Oops. A couple times here and there, mostly Oops. like s dumb mistakes, you know, like jumping off a plat, falling off a platform accidentally getting just too overwhelmed by enemies and stuff. Doom, uh, this one. And, I, but I want to say it was in, 2016 doom it was like near the end of the level when i started dying and running into those things this one like the first spawn room where you had to fight him I, I just started dying and i was like oh this is not what i was expecting because i was expecting to kind of have the same health and armor ratios and stuff like that and the same level of defense but i found myself running out of ammo so often because i was just playing boom 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 just trying to like blow everything out of the sky and it and it just, I died so much. So yeah, they, they definitely threw in a learning curve at you really hard. So when you run out of ammo um, and you're low on shields, is there any way that you can perchance uh, open up political talks with the demons? Can you all... <laughs> White flag. Then, yeah, well, can you surrender? Can you join them? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Never mind, guys. This has been a whole big misunderstanding. I'm so, Oh, man. I just cut your buddy in half, but I'm really sorry. Can we talk this through? Maybe. maybe. I mean, I, I was actually on my way for an interview, you know, with with your boss, with your and, boss I just, and then you I, guys just all attacked me. I just couldn't I, get there I, in time. I, I was running late, so mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> you forced my hand. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I don't think they would react well to the political peace talks, but <laughs> you could try if you wanted to go for the pacifist run of Doom. What you can't do, but <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll make it work. <laughs> Uh, but no, so, so the combat and all that's been great too. The level design has also been really well done in terms of also the levels are massive. Like on the stream, I was talking about that with Brandon. We, we were just talking about like how big and expansive the levels are as opposed to doom 2016. I want to say, I think I'm like the fifth or sixth mission fifth, maybe. And like each one is like an hour long to beat. Like even on stream the other day, uh, when we were playing just the first level, I think it took like 45 minutes to go through the first level. And so it's, it's a hefty game, but the, what's great about it is that it keeps up. Not only do you just, you know, because it's, it's fairly linear in how you're supposed to go. You pretty much have one determined path that you follow to get through each level. But what's great is they pepper in so many secrets and other environmental things that you can mess around with and find to either be you know, weapon power-ups or collectibles, different things like that. Like there's a ton of different things for you to explore and secrets for you to find. You can even find like uh, music records of like tracks of soundtracks and stuff like that in there. Another place like that. You can find little toys of all the demons and everything like that. So it's, yeah. it's cool <laughs> that, it, that it not only gives you so much, these big, huge expansive levels that aren't just long to go through in general. It also gives you these little puzzles that you can figure out from time to time. Like, okay, I can see the secret question mark floating way up there. How do I get there? So then in the next areas, as you go through, you're constantly like looking in it, every nook and cranny being like, oh, is this a breakable wall? Can I get through this grate? Do I jump up here? You know, just trying to look and see all the different places where you can try to find these secrets. That makes it super fun to just be able to jump out there and, and give you more than just running and gunning all the time. The old, the, the really old Doom games kind of had that too, didn't mm -hmm. they? Where they yeah, had very much. Yeah, very much is a carryover of the series. I'm just glad that they're still keeping it up, that there's that there's so much to do. Each mission has 10 to 15, 10-ish probably collectibles per level. 
does it tell you like on an on a screen or something that you've collected X out of how many? It actually does. If you go to the map, it has oh, like okay. a little hex grid that shows. But if it it doesn't tell you what they are, it just shows a question it just mark. Shows how many and as got. you find okay. them, it fills it in on the hexes. So uh, you can kind of keep track and everything. And then at the end of the level, when it gives you your progress update and everything like that, it like shows how many you found and how many extra XP that gives you for, for going through the mission and everything. There are also just a lot of other side things. Oh, one of the big things that I, yeah, I do not think this was in doom 2016, uh, but now there's like wall climbing and everything. Oh, so you can, you can got like, that old breath, the wild treatment, did it? <laughs> well, it, it, it's in very specific areas. Like you can't just do it. On oh, everything, okay. Never mind. But like, um, <laughs> you like, you'll be, uh, there'll be a big chasm in front of you. And on the other side, you can see like this, like rough metal grate and everything. Oh, and you I just, see. you have to jump to that and you climb up it. But there have been a lot of areas like there's this once part where there'll be like floating stone coffins basically. And you they have like a, they're illuminated in green when you jump to them and they're just suspended in midair. When you jump to them and grab onto it, the green light turns red. And then if you stay on it too long, it'll fall. So a lot of these oh. places where you're having to like jump and move and go across all these different things. Again, just a nice little touch other than just jumping from platform to platform. There is jumping from platform to platform. Yes, but it still adds in this little extra spice of life to it. That wasn't there in the 2016 of having these, uh, this, these different environmental hazards that you had to avoid. So I've really had a big, a big, uh, really great time in it. The only thing, and I talked about a couple of these on our stream the other night, the few things that I'm not the biggest fan of, and honestly, it's the one biggest thing that I'm not, a, haven't been a fan of is that Your ugly outfit. No, it's been great. Oh. The, the doom slayer <laughs> armor is great. Actually, here we go. Rip and tear, my friends. So uh, here is the Doom God. Slayer from Doom Eternal. You can see if his I super to, shotgun right here. If I had to dress that ugly, I'd be sad too. <laughs> Here's his <laughs> little bummer. rocket launcher slash flame belch thing for people on video. Give him, give him the tiny and then robot his little... from the Star Wars game. Oh, BD1? Oh, BD1's yeah, up yeah. there. I'll have to, I can't grab Aww. him as easily. And then here, there's his new like cutting blade. It's awesome. But anyway. <laughs> his um, cutting blade. Uh, what was I saying? forgot where I was going with that. Oh, something that you didn't like so well. Oh, yes. Thank you. So this is kind of something, and Brandon and I were talking about this on stream too, is that it would give you hints about weak points on demons that you were about to face that you hadn't fought before, before you even saw the demon. So like you're running around in the first mission. So for in the example, in the first mission, you're running around and then all of a sudden, right before you get to this one area, a pop-up, you know, pauses the game pops up, says weak point arachnatron. Here's how you defeat the arachnatron. And I was like, cool. That's so lame. Thanks for letting me know that I'm about to face this demon. I would much rather have just had this demon bust out of a wall and been like, oh shit. And had to learn how to fight him. Maybe give me the option after it's killed me like five times. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that, that does seem like a really strange thing to include in a game like doom specifically mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, first of all, having something pop up that immediately takes you out of the action, that yeah. can't be good for the game. No, it kind of slows it down. Like the way that, yeah, it, it breaks your, your momentum. Mm -hmm. And B, why would it tell you how to beat a new monster? Yeah. I, I just don't, know don't, I don't understand what the rationale I don't understand. behind that was. Yeah, I don't understand why that was the default setting. Because I did actually when I was do so I restarted, I started in a new save slot for our stream the other night. And I was and I was going through it and I was like, and when we were talking about this, I was like, wait, couldn't I I wonder if you can turn those off. You actually can turn off hints, but oh, why okay. wasn't that the default setting? You know what I mean? Like why you would think, you would think that it would be. Yeah, you would think it would. So that was very odd that that was kind of how they did it. And I was just like, well, okay. Isn't Cause I even make sense. It would even make sense for me if they did that, say on the normal or easy difficulty levels, you know, people who are there for just for more of the, or not, you know, and just something like that. But for me to be playing on ultra violence, the second to hardest difficulty setting, and you're going to basically tell me how to beat the game. That seems a little odd like that. Yeah. I feel like the default setting for that stuff should be off. And then when the game starts and be like having trouble, turn on hints and everything. And then it can be that way. I'm probably when I go back to my, when I 
play more in my normal, in my full playthrough that I'm doing that I'm farther along, I'm going to turn them off from now on because I just, I want to, I want to go into a room and if a giant armored mancubus shows up, I want to be surprised. And so, you know, it's, I guess it's because some of these things, it could be too, that some of these monsters and some of these demons are more, um, like well known in the Doom universe and Doom and Doom lore, so maybe to them, to long time Doom players, this isn't as big of a deal. They're like, yeah, I know this demon exists already, so that's not the big thing, and that's not even the big thing to me. That knowing that the demon exists is that you're telling me how to easily beat the demon without yeah. it eliminates. Well, I think what Brandon has said is it eliminates the the feel of discovery, basically, or the element yeah. of discovery is what. It, and I was like, oh yeah, perfect. That's exactly what it does because it just takes away this. It just hands it to you. It's like, here. Yeah, I don't like that either. I yeah. mean, even if you can't, you know, achieve it through the actual execution of it, still, like, figuring out how to beat any enemy, any boss in any game is part of the battle. Right. So if they just tell you right up front, like, if you encountered a Goomba for the first time in Mario and you didn't know, I must jump upon, you might try to, like, punch him or just exactly. run into him. And yeah. then you have to be like, okay, that doesn't work. So even though that's a very oversimplified example it's part of the game it's but that's figuring out example. how to navigate it so i yeah. don't like that at all that is very strange yeah and that honestly is the biggest complaint i've had of the game so far so far everything else is ticking all the right boxes is it over the top and delightfully gory yes it is are there tons of huge weapons that i can add to my arsenal that will make demons go boom in a big way yes there are is there really fun exploration and platforming that I can take across as I traverse through these landscapes? Absolutely. And are there plenty of secrets for me to find? You're darn right. So it's hitting all the boxes. Just don't spoil what I'm about to play before I even play it for me. And this, and that's a big thing for me anyway, just cause I, ho I hate spoilers in general. So it's just like, don't just don't do that. So for, so that's my biggest thing. I'm going to turn it off from now on from here on out. And I'll probably won't have that complaint anymore. So, which would be good, especially as I get to some of the bigger, like newer, really new demons of, of doom 20 of doom eternal. I want to be able to keep that, uh, surprise to as big, big a surprise as I can. But, uh, other than that, I mean, as I expected, soundtrack's fantastic. Uh, it's just, again, the perfect, perfect pairing to the combat and to the gameplay. It is even more aggressive, I feel like, actually, than Doom 2016 soundtrack, which is really fun to hear as well. It's actually funny. I'd been playing the first few times I started playing the game. I actually I waited until like Sam had gone to bed and like was playing it and everything later at night. And so like one of the day we were like talking about like what we wanted to do. And I was like, well, I want to play Doom at some point today. You know, I, I, I just need to play it so I can talk about it on the show. And Sam says, oh, well, you can do that now. And I said, I don't I don't think this is one you'll want to be around for <laughs> so uh Not and so she like went that. she went and like did something else and then came back in as i was like just starting to play it and getting it turned on and everything and she sat there for literally five seconds and was like yeah no i'm out this is i don't want to be around this at all it's too hectic it's too just like yeah i was like yeah no it, it does i this is what i meant i i don't think it would be in your uh in your wheelhouse of something you want to be trying to do other things while i'm playing this beside you so i would love it if after you like beat the game or something, uh, if at some point the game allowed you to get rid of the original soundtrack, even though it is wonderful, in favor of like Beethoven's classical compositions. <laughs> That'd <laughs> like, be really some cool. Ridiculously mismatched music. I think that would be really fun. Yeah, that would be really neat. Um, let me see. Anything else that I wanted to touch on before I hand it off to you for Animal Crossing? I'm trying to think. Uh, there's a there. They've upgraded to a lot of the upgrade the upgrade system. There's a lot more. There's like these different. Uh, a lot more collectibles or current currencies. I would call them that you can like for armor for points, sentinel points, sentinel batteries, different things like this that you can use to that way you can upgrade your suit and armor and your weapons and mod slots and different stuff like that. But that's pretty par for the course online with what there was with doom 2016 they just added a few more layers to it i think to give a bit more customization but overall i'm having a blast but how about you a literal blast a literal blast how how has your time with animal crossing new horizons been so animal crossing new horizons uh is you know first and foremost everything that i could have asked for um in an animal crossing game it is so far 
the pinnacle of what Animal Crossing has been able to achieve in its series. Uh, I think there are one, two, three, four. This would be the hold on. It's still, it's still doing it. Is it? Is there that setting in Discord itself? That's something about like where it auto. What was that thing you had me change the other day? Um, let's where it like auto out. auto switches or like uh, tries to auto mute you or something like that. Cause that's what Let's it sounds like it's here. doing. Cause it's normally like every time you stop talking, it like cuts. And then when you, but it's like, even when you just take tiny little breaths, uh, that would be, there's echo cancellation, noise reduction, automatic game control. It might be maybe, mm, no, not that. Um, there's, there's it just, it automatically will, determine input sensitivity. That might be it. Okay, I'll turn that turn that off. off. Okay, so now it's just set to you know middle of the road input sensitivity. Okay, that sounds good on my end. I think that should work then. Try, let's try okay. this out. It, it doesn't seem to be doing it yet. It, just for whatever right. reason, when you started talk, talking more this time, it wasn't doing it earlier. It just for whatever reason now it decided to be like, all right, we're gonna screw up. So okay, that, Animal that Crossing. Is, okay. Animal Crossing. Uh, so Animal Crossing New Horizons is first and foremost uh, everything I could have possibly wanted in an Animal Crossing game. Almost. There's the, there's a tiny little handful of things that I'll bring up later. Uh, but by and large, it is, you know, the height of the Animal Crossing series so far, which is to be expected. It is the latest and greatest thing. But sometimes some series can manage to undo all of their past accomplishments and newer games wind up being worse. That is not the case with New Horizons. Uh, Animal Crossing has been out since the GameCube era. I think there was the first Animal Crossing, City, Folk, Wild World. Those are reversed. Wild World, City, Folk, New Leaf on the handhelds on the 3DS. Uh, and then this will be the fifth uh, formal installment of Animal Crossing. There have also been a couple of smaller side games like Happy Home Designer, which still got a lot of love, but you know, Happy Home Designer wasn't what most people would consider canon Animal Crossing and part of the real series. So uh, New Horizons is just the delight that the world needs right now. Uh, I do, I don't, I, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I would just like to say I kind of think Nintendo got really weirdly lucky with the timing on this one. Yeah, let's give people a game where all you do is escape from your own personal reality to build a new one in a different world. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah, weirdly the coincidental, right? The timing is <laughs> suspicious to say the least. Uh, but the premise of Animal Crossing New Horizons is a little different, but not that far off base from what the... Um, older games were. So the premise is that Tom Nook, uh, resident Tanuki and businessman of the Animal Crossing world, has decided to do a new business venture where he does deserted island getaway packages. Ooh. And you as player character, um, your, play your character is completely customizable. You are humanoid, so even though it's Animal Crossing, your uh, player character is a little human person. You can customize all of your features, like your hair, your skin, your eyes. Uh, they're not exactly realistic looking you know if you've seen the graphics of animal crossing but they are adorable and charming uh so you customize your player character and then you um, embark on your new life because the idea is that you're on this deserted island to stay you're mm -hmm. there to live which is a wild idea for a business venture uh but um your character uh basically arrives on this deserted island with two other animals two other villagers so you could call them islanders, I guess, in this game, but in previous games, they're called villagers. They are the animal creatures that join you and that are your live-in NPCs in your town, in your city, in your island. So you start with two, and they're just randomized, depending on who you get. Um, in my town, I got Sprocket, the robotic ostrich. I saw it. Uh, yeah, I saw Sprocket when we were Yeah, you your saw stream. Sprocket. Yeah. He, he was on my stream. Um, I think I mentioned at the time that I didn't hate Sprocket, but I also didn't really like him that much because he's he's pretty he's kind of creepy looking. Yeah. Like if you see him in the distance, you're like, oh god, he's coming. <laughs> so he's very nice. He's like a jock type villager, so he's very sporty. Uh, but he he was a little creepy. Uh, and then I got Renee, which is different from Renee. So Renee R E. N-E-E -E is a pink rhinoceros. Okay. Renee, spelled R-E-N-E, -E, 
E I G H, like a horse nays, is a horse character. And oh I was like, God. oh, there are two Renees. That's so <laughs> funny. Uh, so I got Renee the Pink Rhino, and she's adorable. Um, I think that her personality type is considered Uchi, maybe. I haven't really looked any of this up because I do like to play uh, new Animal Crossing games with new eyes at first to mm -hmm. discover as much as I can on my own. Uh, but for those of you that don't know, the whole point of Animal Crossing is basically building up your town. So your town can be wherever it is that you are, you're at at the time. So in this case, it's your island, but your island is basically your town. Mm -hmm. uh, so the point is to build up your town, improve your resources, make the island more beautiful, and more people will move in. So the whole point is to get more villagers to move in, uh, preferably villagers that you like, <laughs> and then to keep them very happy and keep them in your town for as long as you want them. I actually just found out yesterday while I was playing that Sprocket wants to move away. Oh, really? How? So, uh, How could he do that? I know. How can he do that? We're trapped. This is a deserted island. You can't go anywhere. Tom Nook um, brings I, you in, but he doesn't let you back off. He doesn't let you back off. But I did actually tell Sprocket, okay, that's fine. Bye, buddy. So Sprocket is officially moving out, which is unfortunate because the villager that I actually hate the most is Peggy the pig. I just don't like her. I know that she's based off of Miss Piggy. Someone did inform me of that. I don't care. I love Miss Piggy. Yeah, hey, Miss Piggy. Piggy's great. Anyway, so the point is, uh, you initially start with just two villagers and nothing on the island. Um, you have a tent called Resident Services, and that's where Tom Nook and his sons, nephews, employees, Timmy and Tommy Nook, uh, they, they are both accompanying him. And it's never really explained what their relationship to Tom Nook really is, so you're not sure. Mm. But they are basically his co-businessmen, um, and they are there to eventually set up a shop, because they're always the shopkeeps. Uh, so Resident Services is like, huh, so there's a whole bunch of nothing out here. We need you, player character, to be our resident representative. So in previous games, you may have been the mayor of a town. In this game, it's not a real town, so you're the resident representative. And your job as representative is to help the town grow in a much more tangible way than your poor little NPCs can. So this is where a bunch of the new and wonderful and fascinating features of the game really come into play. Uh, because in New Horizons, there's a totally new crafting system that was never there before. So through the island's resources, you know, it's pitched to you as like, oh, we have this island full of natural resources. You can go around and with your net, with your axe, with your shovel, you can basically chop down trees to get wood. You can knock your shovel against rocks to get rock, iron, clay. You can shake trees to get tree branches, which are different than wood, uh, and all other manner of materials, even weeds. Even weeds that grow out of the ground, those are also considered materials. And depending on what it is you're trying to craft, there might even be more interesting materials that you need on top of those more basic ones. So the crafting system, which in the context of uh, New Horizons is called the DIY system, which how cute, it's much more fun than the word crafting. Yeah. So the DIY system is you have a workbench and you through XYZ actions get recipes that you can use to make DIY things. So you can DIY pretty much anything. Uh, the key item that you initially start out being able to DIY are your tools. So you do actually have to make your own axe. You have to make your own bug net. You have to make your own shovel. You have to make a slingshot. You have to make a fishing rod. All of the above. You have to actually craft those yourself. I like that, though, because a lot of I, games, like even like Stardew, you start off with all those tools at your disposal already. So yes. So that's kind of cool that it, it takes it a step further and is like, no, you got to make everything like yeah. start purely from scratch. Yeah, I don't think it gives you anything to start with, um, but I believe that the most basic items you need to make, uh, you know, maybe the axe and the fishing pole or the bug net, mm -hmm. they really only require things that you can shake out of trees or that are already readily laying around the ground, like every rock on the island will usually have one or two smaller rocks um, available for you to just pick up without having to crack into the rock with your shovel. So you can just pick up tree branches, you can pick up rocks, and then craft the most basic essentials before you improve your tools. Now, 
I'm going to take a quick aside here to mention the one thing about the game that I genuinely hate okay. and that I don't understand why they, well, I will probably eventually understand, but for now it is incredibly annoying. Uh, currently, when you start the game, you have a flimsy axe, flimsy fishing pole, blah, blah, blah. They are all the title word flimsy, meaning that their durability is terrible. Mm -hmm. So let's say that you have a flimsy axe. If you use it against a tree, I don't know, 10 times, it breaks and you have to go make a new one. Oh, wow. Now, at the point that I am at, which is about two weeks on without any time traveling of a significant nature, uh, I have upgraded to the, I think it's called the kind of good or like the moderate, basically the moderate level tools. Mm -hmm. So they have a little bit more durability, but they still break after about 30 uses. Oh, and wow. that's every item. That's your slingshot. It's your watering can. It's your fishing pole. All of them will break and you have to make new ones. It is infuriating. It's the worst thing from Breath of the Wild now in a new game. Oh, no. And it's like, no, this is not what I wanted. Now, it is incredibly annoying right now, and I hate it, hate it, hate it. That being said, it is very easy to get new materials to make more tools, but it just breaks your flow. It's an annoyance. I can't stand it. And... I think that eventually they will in-game patch that out by way of better tools. Uh, in the previous Animal Crossing games, you had to use ores like silver and gold mm -hmm. to improve your tools to where they had basically maximum uh, ability. So a gold watering can could water more flowers than a basic watering can could. A gold axe uh, took the least time to chop down trees and could do it very quickly. Uh, and so on and so forth. But the point is, you eventually got much better quality tools in the previous games. So I am banking on, I mean, fingers crossed over here, that eventually you're going to get recipes for super improved tools that are indestructible. Well, it's just uh, kind of a... Sorry, what were you... Yeah, it's, one, it's the one thing about the game that I don't get the rationale, except for maybe at the very beginning... Because, you know, you do have to craft your own tools, but if they even just increase the durability, that would be such a boon. Because as it stands, it's just annoying. Uh, and if there's never indestructible tools, if they always have durability issues, that would be just a huge strike against it in my book. Because mm -hmm. it's just, it's the worst. I hate it right, so much. Right. <laughs> it's, it's, it's odd because it almost just, it just adds in an, an unnecessary level of busy work. Yes, and the thing is, Animal Crossing is already a game of more or less busy work. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's a lot of people go into the game and they're like, "All right, time to do my daily chores," yeah. and that's the fun part because you're like, "Yes, I have this little list of daily things that I need to check off." Not literally, you don't literally have a list, but you you know what you're about. Um, so you already have plenty to do, and you have plenty to craft. That's what's confusing to me is that. If it were the case of, oh, they really wanted to make sure that they were maximizing the crafting system, they already have. Mm -hmm. There's so many things that you can and should be crafting for your island. You can craft furniture. You can craft uh, public works projects. Like, for example, you can purchase the recipe for a water fountain. Who wouldn't want a water fountain on your island? So you even have to craft um, like infrastructure, like bridges and stairs or inclines. All of those things are tied into the DIY system. So why include your basic tools with that? Yeah, it's that's just odd. very annoying. That's odd. Uh, but that's kind of the one tangent that I wanted to go off on for the one thing about the game that I genuinely don't like. I like how we uh, both have just one thing so far that we're like, thing. no, really grinding our <laughs> yeah. gears. Uh, something that they did do that is a massive improvement that I really like, and this isn't necessarily new, it's just improved, mm -hmm. is the way that your inventory works in-game has, A, been super expanded. You can hold much more than you previously could in other games. Uh, and B, what can stack in your inventory? Uh, previously, you know, most items wouldn't stack. Uh, fruits would stack. That's about it. I think fruit might be the only thing that used to stack. Yeah. Maybe some small, like, bells. You, you could stack money in your pockets, but only up to a certain amount. I don't remember much being stackable. 
but thank Christmas. In this game, A, you're crafting materials. Most of your crafting materials are all stackable. So things like flower petals, obviously your iron ores, your tree branches, those all stack on top of each other. Mm -hmm. Uh, To a certain point, I think for things like wood and iron ore, those go up to 30 and then it has to start a new stack. Uh, But for things like weeds, you know, weeds goes up to 100 and then it starts a new stack. So the stacking system and the inventory have been greatly expanded and improved. Um, 10 out of 10. Love it. Nice. Uh, The other things that they have done that are not necessarily new per se, but just expanded and improved is in previous games. I hesitate to call it an achievement system because that seems very out of place for Animal Crossing. Uh, But in the previous games, if you did, you know, X, Y, Z thing, if you caught a hundred fish, let's say in Animal Crossing New Leaf, a weird walrus would come to town and he would be like, hello there. I'm the medals officer. And he would give you like a bronze, silver or gold medal because you had done something to earn that. So it is more or less a trophy system. So what that is in New Horizons is different and better. First of all, it's massive. When you bring up the list of, uh, what does he actually call them? They're like Nook, oh, the Nook Mileage Program, of course. Mm. So Tom Nook, as part of his deserted island getaway, he has this mileage program. So it's like airline miles, I guess. Uh, But you get both in-game currency, which is bells, that's basically gold. But then you also have this new thing called the Nook Mileage Program. And it's basically you earn miles for doing anything on your island that improves the state of the island Mm -hmm. that includes watering flowers you know planting new trees etc and that ties into this in-game trophy system uh, of the nook mileage program so for every new milestone that you accomplish you get more nook miles to spend on other things like bigger public works projects uh tickets to visit other deserted islands just Mm -hmm. for fun Mm -hmm. uh, and all other sorts of things So that's been a really fun experience because it does give you something to track your progress more or less of how well you're doing in your island, but you only encounter new, um, basically unlockables, new achievables when you personally hit them. So there are a bunch of blanks on my current Nook mileage like list of things that I just haven't encountered yet. So I don't even know what those are. There's no hints. It's just a blank space of something that I will eventually encounter. Mm. And I really like that because it shows you that there is something there. You're going to get to it eventually, but you don't have it quite yet. So uh, I love that. I think the mileage program is a really good addition. Nice. In terms of, you know, just kind of the general look and feel of New Horizons, it's perfect. Um, It's don't fix what isn't broken. Mm -hmm. They really didn't have to change the atmosphere of Animal Crossing at all because that's not what the Animal Crossing fans would want. Uh, It is very relaxed, laid back, take every minute at your own pace, do whatever you want, no holds barred. If you don't want to improve your island, don't. You can just derp around and catch fish all day. If you do want to improve your island, you can do it in a massively impactful way. So this is probably the biggest uh, change of Animal Crossing that uh, I, it's so big, I'm actually shocked. Mm -hmm. Um, So in terms of previous games, when new villagers moved in or when new public amenities became available, like a better nook store, for example, those were fixed locations. Villagers would move in at random on your island. They would just plop their house down one day and you'd be like, crap, that was right on top of my special pink flowers. Uh, uh, uh. Darn you, new villager. So it was actually very annoying. In this game, when somebody wants to move to your island, you pick where they go. Oh, nice. You get the housing kit and you basically pick exactly where you want it to go in your island. On top of that, your own house. So, you know, you put your tent down, then you build a house. Later, if you decide, man, I really don't like that I put my put my house here because you may have unlocked a new part of your island and you want to relocate it somewhere else, you can move your whole house to somewhere else and it's actually not that big of a fee. It's only 30,000 bells. That's chump change in Animal Crossing in currency <laughs> in the bell world. So it's very easy to do. You can move your house as much as you want. So the fact that there's no limit on that aside from how much money you have is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. And... 
And that also applies to shops. So every new shop, your museum, you pick where all of that goes. The only thing that you can't uh, physically change, I think, is your plaza. Mm. I don't think you can move your island central plaza, which makes perfect sense. Uh, The new wild addition that I mentioned earlier is, and I haven't encountered this yet, I just know that it's possible, kind Mm -hmm. of as a more advanced part of the game, the ability to terraform. So what I mean by that is in in previous games, you had your island layout of your river goes here. Uh, You've got this section over here. Your beaches are down here. In this game, you can change all of that. You can make new rivers. You can make new inclines because it goes up to three different levels. You can make new waterfalls. You can do whatever you want. That's very cool. So if you don't currently like your island layout, don't worry, you're going to be able to change it soon. So as long as you're still progressing and, you know, really expanding on your island, there are eventually some insane things that you can do with it. And right now, when you're visiting your friends, because the social aspect is a big part of it as well, a lot of your islands look very similar, unless you have somebody that's really invested and has done a lot of time traveling. So you might see a lot of crossover right now, but eventually everyone's islands are going to be beautifully, wildly different. Yeah. I'm going to build one moat around the center, and I'm going to live within that moat, and no one shall come in. <laughs> That's not actually what I'm going to do, but you get the idea. So the options are almost limitless for what you can do in this game as far as customizing your island, and it's just astonishing. Uh, you can also, this is something that's new to Animal Crossing main games, Not new to Happy Home. I think Happy Home had this. Um, But you can place items outdoors. So previously, you couldn't really put furniture outside. You can put furniture outside now. You can make a cute little outdoor bistro. You can do all kinds of things that are both good for you, because they're cute, and they're good for your villagers, because they have more to do outside. Uh, The villagers themselves have been graphically improved to the nth degree. Uh, Their personalities seem a little bit more extreme and uh, the word extreme probably isn't what i'm looking for there but their villity their personality seem just more more of mm-hmm. what they were before in terms of their types which i think is a nice change uh and yeah it's everything i could have wanted that's uh, awesome I'm trying to think of anything else that i oh i mentioned this vaguely the other day and i was super wrong uh i said to you i don't think we were recording but i said to you that oh yeah the soundtrack is the same as it ever was that's right I false asked. it's different yeah that's definitely not true uh, it may have just been that i didn't have the volume up high enough I don't know. Uh, But the soundtrack is really different now. Um, It's still got the same flow of a new track starts every hour, and then it's just a small track that loops around on itself over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. But the music overall, especially in comparison to New Leaf, which was very chill and mellow, almost to the point of being a little sad at Mm -hmm. some points, this game is much more upbeat. Um, And that's, you know, going to sound crazy uh if you're if you're not really expecting it but the the tracks are just a lot more up tempo they've got a wildly different sound to them at least in my book you know they're still familiar but it definitely is a different soundtrack than in previous games so for sure very cool uh, and that's animal crossing it's a perfect game everyone nice. should play it i mean i have very limited exposure to it other from what i've seen a fuchsia play it and then what i was seeing of you playing it the other night and then even just in a little bit of like pocket camp and everything that i've played but i have been surprised pleasantly by like how many little mechanics there are included in it that i didn't know for example when in your stream the other day you were walking by your flowers and you said that oh cool if you mentioned that like, you can cross pollinate flowers to, to create new more breeds. special flowers. And I was like, holy crap, that's that's really cool. Yeah, that it is there's little cool. systems like this included throughout the game to give you just a little bit more control over how you can literally make that island your own. And I think that's really exactly. cool. Exactly. I do actually want to mention one other bit of feedback that I will probably never have my hands on myself. Mm-hmm. But one of my old friends, uh, Sal, from my old Splatoon server, he pointed out that, so in the context of Animal Crossing you as resident representative or as mayor or as whoever is in charge of Mm -hmm. that town or island, you're the main player. In the previous games, if you had, because the game is massive, you can't have multiple save files. Mm. Your file is the game. Oh, wow. 
Now, other people can join you. So let's say, for example, that you're a parent, you start your own Animal Crossing New Horizons file, but you want to add your kid in because they want to play with you too. So they can create, of course, their own Nintendo profile on your same Switch, and then they can join your town. So they kind of have their own house, I think. Okay. The problem is, and he was really frustrated with this, and I think this was really good feedback, is that in terms of local multiplayer of you and someone else literally playing on the same island at the same time, both as the main player, uh, he found that it was just really limited for Mm. what the other person could do to the point that it almost felt useless. Because when you're playing online and other people come to your island or you go to their islands, you do have a a lot of freedom. So you don't have the ability to obviously affect their island that much, but you can fish, you can dig up trees if they let you. You can do all kinds of things. So I did think that it was really interesting feedback that for two people sharing the same file, it's significantly more limited and feels a lot worse than it does to play online with other folks. So that's just something to be aware of. Um, I'll probably never really be able to try that myself. Yeah. I live alone. Minu can't. My cat can't work the controller. So (laughs) that's just one more thing that I think is worth mentioning. Okay, cool. Good to know. But overall, though, it's everything you could have hoped and dreamed. So like overall, 10 out of 10 great. would recommend. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, everyone should play Animal Crossing. The more the merrier. Um, of course, you can. There's a lot of online connectivity in terms of you can create your own in-game designs and then share them via QR codes. You mm-hmm. may have seen people talking about QR codes of, again. I have just so seen like online just a lot of people being like, here's my yeah. QR code for this jacket or this shirt or hat or something like that. Yep. You can make paths on the ground, you can make clothing, you can make hats, you can make all kinds of things. And you can share those with the world, and it's a wonderful experience. Nice. Well, that's been really cool to hear. And I'm really glad that it's living up to your expectations, especially because of how long of a big wait and everything it was for this game. It's great to see that it it has been not a letdown. So, you know, that you've been having Um, a lot of fun with it. Why doesn't Sam have her copy yet? So... I have tried. I, I keep like dropping little things. Like when I saw that you could like make and design your own clothes, I was like, "Hey, look, Sam, you can you can play this. You can have it." <laughs> Sam knows herself. Uh, That's why we don't have it yet <laughs> because oh, she knows goodness. that she, she would start it and it would be something that she would. I mean, that's what happened when she played Stardew. So like she just got there's super nothing into wrong it. with that. <laughs> oh, I know. And that's what I tell her. There's nothing wrong with that. Like, it's great. I love that you can have these games like this and that you just really like, you know, can lose yourself in and have and spend all day. And I think it's awesome. But she also is like, I can't do that every day. <laughs> and I was like, I understand that, too. So that's but funny. uh I, it, I'm working on her. I'll see. I'll see if, cause I know that like, it would be a fun one for her to like, I don't know if I'll ever play it necessarily, but I know that it's one that she would enjoy a whole lot. And then she could like jump in on with, with uh, you and fuchsia and all that other stuff and like do some fun stuff. So I'm, I'm slowly ch- trying to chip away at her resolve. So, all right. I believe in you. You can do it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, of course, everyone, we would love to hear your thoughts as well on both of these games, Doom Eternal and Animal Crossing New Horizons. Have you played one? Have you played the other? Have you played both? We'd love to know. So let us know your thoughts on both of these games. Send us an email at teamchatpodcast@gmail.com. Follow us on our social media and let us know there. Comment below on the YouTube video. Join our Discord and talk about it with us there. But before we go, we do have to do our soundtrack spotlight, which speaking of our Discord, our entry for this week's soundtrack spotlight comes from our Discord and a, a new a new submission too from a new per, from a new from a new uh, member. Yes, so this comes from Green Leader 87 on our Discord um, and he writes for our soundtracks. I've been really enjoying your episodes on your top 10 game soundtracks and finishing it's got me next week. Up, finishing next week and it's gotten me thinking about some of my own favorites. So he says, while there are some really good soundtracks I've listened to over the years, the two that I keep coming back to are Stellaris and Hollow Knight, obviously. Mm, Hollow Knight. Uh, But Stellaris is a game that neither Jared or I have ever played, uh, and we want to feature a track from the Stellaris soundtrack. So he says, both do a phenomenal job of setting the tone of their respective games. So the track we're going to be featuring is Deep Space Travel from Stellaris. Very nice. Well, enjoy listening to that track, Deep Space. Space travel from Stellaris. Uh, do we know the Do travel. we know the composer? I I realized I forgot to look at the composer before this. It might be this person, Brad Sipe, or that might just be the YouTube channel. Let's actually find out real quick. Yeah, let's Stellaris. let's give proper cred. T composer. Okay, here we go. I got. I got. Okay, sweet. Okay. 
So uh, Stellaris, uh, the complete soundtrack was composed by Andreas Waldetoft and Bert Meyer. Very really cool. hope I got that right. And it includes performances by the Brand- yeah, the Brandenburg State Orchestra and Ooh. the Budapest Film Orchestra. Ooh, Ooh classy. So this is to be a good one. Yeah, it's yeah, really good. I've listened, I've listened to a couple other tracks from it. Like I have one in my soundtrack playlist that I've had for a long time, and it's solid music. So when he saw it, when he when Green Leader 87 like suggested this to us, I was like, oh yeah, this looks this this is good. This is some good stuff. So enjoy deep space travel from Stellaris. But until next time, everybody, that concludes this episode of Team Chat Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Jarrett Wilson, joined through the power of the internet by my co-host, Rachel Mogan. Peace out. We'll see you all next week for a great, fun, and exciting topic where, as I said, we will be concluding our countdown of our top 10 soundtracks of all time. Strap in. It'll probably be a little bit of a longer episode because we're going to knock out slots four, three, two, and one. So It's going to be long. <laughs> it's going to be long, but it's going to be great, and there's going to be some exciting and fantastic music shared with you all. Can't wait for you all to hear it. So tune in next week for that episode. Until then, we'll see you all next time. <laughs>